This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Good Sunday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Flashpoint. I'm Ben Thompson. Here's hoping you have, you're having a fun-filled all-star weekend. Joining me today is Charlotte City Councilman Matt Newton, directly to the right of me. Also candidate for City Council, Brandon Pierce, making his inaugural appearance on Flashpoint. And State Representative Chaz Beasley, not his first time on this show by a long shot. The mayor taking time out of what is a busy weekend in Charlotte to address a, a growing controversy. Recent immigrant arrests here in the Charlotte area over the last couple of weeks. Late, late this past week, Mayor Lyles created a new committee designed to address the concerns of Charlotte's immigrant community. She sent a statement to city council reading, quote, early today, I overheard a conversation between city staff the staff works with citizens to build construction projects, and one said that it was difficult to get return phone calls from people who don't speak English as they are reluctant to return the calls. She goes on, I am concerned the current issue within our 40,000 immigrants is fear, including fear of our city government. This comes after what was a heated conversation at City Council. The conversation started about just a grant for CMPD for a task force to crack down on drunk drivers. However, some council members say this crackdown coming at the same time as a recent uptick in arrests by federal immigration agents is a bit suspicious. Madam Mayor, I would say that this is all germane discussion. Um, if you look on the responses to the questions of the consent agenda item, it will it talks about how checkpoints are selected, yes. um, and that is relevant to uh, this grant as this grant does go to funding these checkpoints. So I think it's relevant for any council member to ask about these checkpoints and 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 the criteria that goes into it and the surrounding nature. I would of agree it. So with I, that. I, I, I agree think, with I think, that. I don't think I think I every line that. of questioning has been relevant to this. <laughs> specific uh, consent agenda item and I would encourage us to continue uh, to question because that is what we were elected to do. Um, I thought we were elected to serve our community but that's and that's what we do by asking questions for, questions for people that right, have sorry, the ability to ask to those questions. That, that, an, uh, that is our are. job. Uh, a, a rare scene, really, from our mayor, who's typically one of the more diplomatic politicians we see in the Charlotte area, uh, talking there to Braxton Winton. Uh, Matt Newton, you are on this new committee that we just talked mm -hmm. about. Um, what a, first of all, let me get your thoughts on, on what that was um, and, and the growing controversy over the last few weeks. Yeah, well, you know, I represent District 5, which is the most yeah. diverse district in all of Charlotte. Uh, arguably all of the southeast and uh, I, I think we all recognize given the federal uh, uh, federal presence uh, in, uh, in East Charlotte we all recognize uh, the fear and the disruption uh, it has created uh, and we appreciate that uh, we're trying to to find solutions to this problem uh, we're being told uh, by city staff members that our hands are tied having said that uh, we're talking about uh, a, uh, a new federal uh, legislative agenda uh, and also uh, so from the standpoint of the mayor the creation of this ad hoc committee to make sure that uh, we are engaging the community uh, letting them know uh, that there is no collusion uh, from the city uh, with uh, the uh, the federal agents uh, in uh, in East Charlotte and at the same time uh, letting them know that uh, that 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 separation of uh, federal government, even state government and local government exist, and the services we provide are available for everyone, uh, including uh, our great immigrant community and neighbors. The concern here among a lot of people, and you heard uh, Mr. Winston say it there, is that there is some sort of collusion between, I, I even hate to use that word at this point because it's, yeah. it's so taken, <laughs> yeah. it's taken on a whole new meaning, but there is some sort of collusion um, between the city and federal agents because, again, more background here, the 287G program is no longer around. The sheriff got rid of it, and that allowed deputies to ask for immigration uh, papers from local immigrants. That's no longer happening, so the federal agents having to step up their game here and, and do what a lot of people are s sort of hesitant about. Yeah, well, when it comes to 287G in particular, I think it's important to remember one thing, and that is 287G was voluntary. It was voluntary on the part of the county and the sheriff's department to become a part of that program. So the idea that ICE can come into communities and oftentimes disrupt the fabric of the community by going in and making people scared to continue to engage in commerce, continue to, to be vibrant parts of their community, that's a problem. And I think that ICE needs to take 
a lot more care in how they're going about doing these things because if you're a person who is uh, concerned that you're going to get um, pulled over or stopped, not because you're doing anything wrong, but just because you may speak Spanish or you may look like someone who may be an immigrant to someone who is a person who is working for ICE, that's a huge problem. We need to make sure that people feel welcome in Charlotte and that they feel like they can continue to go about their business and not be, con not be concerned about being stopped. Now, a, a lot of conservatives, a lot of Republicans will say this is exactly what ICE is meant to do. This is exactly the job they're tasked with. But you hear the mayor, she's referring to it. This is making the jobs harder of a lot of people in city government, not to even mention the police department. Yeah, I think the important thing to do first off is really understand that we're dealing with people. And I think sometimes we always bring politics in. We talk about ideas and conceptions and stuff, but it's really about people. And so these people have families, right? Um, they're in this community. ICE does have a job to do. And when we had 287G, they were doing that job in the jail cells, right? When somebody committed a crime or, or uh, violated some type of civil violation, they were doing it there. ICE warned us, and they even told us that because of our removal of that voluntary program, which again, it was voluntary, um, they had to come into the community and do their jobs now. What, what is your response to that? Because I had the council member Mayfield on last week with Tark Bakari, and we had the same conversation. If we don't have 287G, is that not then going to be necessarily ICE agents' responsibility? Well, I mean, I think what we're looking at here is federal preemption of what would otherwise be considered a local choice, local control. Having said that, uh, we still don't have all the data and all the facts to fully understand the scope of the raids uh, and the way in which they're being conducted. So the uh, uh, the. The, the practices here. Uh, we heard some information during a press conference pertaining to, to numbers of arrest. Uh, we were referred to old data. Uh, we don't know, so the devil's in the details, yeah. right? So uh, when we're looking and we're trying to sift through these details, figure out how many stops are occurring, how many agents are in East Charlotte. I got a report the other day that we had agents congregating at the Eastland Mall site. Uh, we don't know any of this stuff. And this is what is seeding or sowing the seeds of fear in the community. And frankly, when the immigrant community hurts, we all hurt. They prop up our economy and they're good, hardworking, decent people. Well, and, and when, you have, when you have immigrants scared to call the city for whatever it might be or call police and not reporting crimes, then you have a whole other set of problems that, that people might not directly understand. What are you hoping this committee does? Yeah, so, uh, so what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to clarify uh, that, uh, that, that there are city services available to all of, of the citizens of Charlotte, uh, and, and we appreciate, uh, right? So, uh, so given the nature uh, right now of what could potentially be broad, wide, overreaching, sweeping raids uh, that are bringing in, d disrupting the community because we're talking about stops of folks who are doing absolutely nothing wrong. Uh, we want to communicate that we understand, we appreciate your contributions to our community, and we support you, and there are city services that are available to you as well. Staying on the same topic, the looks like we're going to avoid a government shutdown, but the president says he's going to uh, order an uh, emergency declaration to get the wall built. Do you think it happens? Um, I think it gets tied up in court. Uh, I think that it's very clear that this is not what the 1976 law was intended to be used for. And you would think that more conservatives would not only be concerned about the fact that, the, that the, this seems to be a clear example of government overreach, but also concerned about what happens next. There's not always going to be a Republican the in the White House. The president that it sets. So what do you Absolutely. say about that? For one, do you support the wall? Yeah. So great question. Yeah. And he took the words of the president right out my mouth there. But I do support the wall. I think the majority of Americans actually support the wall and the idea of border security. I don't think that's something that Republicans are the only ones who own. I think everybody believes in that. What do you say about this, though? The, the precedent it does set if he yes. orders, a, you know, next time when it's a Democrat in office and they, as it's been said, orders emergency declaration for global warming or yeah. something like that. So Representative Beasley said something that was key. And so I've been talking to all of my Republican colleagues and we're all like scared. We're like, we need this wall. But, oh, if Trump uses this, um, this precedence, I mean, what happens when a Democrat takes control in uh, 2024 and they outlaw guns or something like that. I mean, it sets a bad tone. But I do think that there's value in understanding that President Trump is trying to commit to a promise of keeping our country safe. And I would encourage everybody to get on board and find a way to do that. I mean, it's nonsense. Democrats have supported border wall funding in the past.
Your quick reaction? Yeah, yeah so I would disagree. I, I, I don't think that the majority of Americans support a wall. I think this is a fabricated uh, national emergency, uh, and that sets a terrible precedent moving forward. Uh, and so I think in that respect, you know, there's plenty of funding for border security in the budget that's being considered right now. There's no need to uh, to engage in this sort of a tactic for an additional $5.7 billion that could certainly be spent better elsewhere. All right, more Flashpoint after this.